I'm here with Steve Jervetson. Hi, Hello. Steve. Hi, how are you? <laughs> and uh, Steve is explaining uh, the new artifacts that he has in the in his space museum. Absolutely, we got a lot of cool things. So we have some guidance computers in this little area and some air handling equipment, things basically to scrub the CO2 out of the air. So for example, inside of this container are the lithium hydroxide canisters that are used in the um, command module to scrub the air. Wow. And uh, these things would be placed into, I had a spare one here, but basically into these areas here where you have these interlocking handles where you can't open both at the same time but yep. basically you have two different places to mm -hmm. have the air handling and then this entire unit is the air handling unit I mean, this, this incredible amount of plumbing and piping to pull that off mm -hmm. and then uh, while we're on that topic we also have the Baran or the Soviet equivalent uh, this box which when I take these panels off it'll look really pretty inside there's an incredibly complex set of handling that's basically also the uh, Baron that they never uh, took off right? well they only flew once without people they yes, flew yes. once in the uh -huh. and then uh, it was the, supposedly the most expensive thing Russia has ever or the Soviet Union has ever undertaken uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. and they copied the, the shuttle down to the centimeter uh -huh. um, of similar actually this is a Saturn V flight computer it flies in a ring um, part way down the booster stage in Apollo 12 when lightning hit uh, on takeoff and the entire command module was rebooting and all screens were off. This thing mm -hmm. continued without any problem, you know, much farther down the rocket. Cool. And it's uh -huh. interesting, it's in a cylinder. I wanna, it's, I believe it's made by, made by IBM uh, under contract. And uh, I'm wondering if it's cylindrical, which normally, like, you can see one of these in, on display at the Smithsonian in this huge ring that's, that's uh, the diameter of the Saturn V. Uh, why is this itself in a cylinder? Maybe because it was meant to be used in more than one mission, not just the Saturn V, but other rockets that ah, okay. have narrower yeah. diameter. Yes. Uh -huh. This is a prize of the collection. This is amazing. It's an entire Apollo lunar module, inertial navigation system. It's got the flight computer, the inertial measurement unit inside of here is a little sphere within a sphere. So two axes, um, a gimbaled. Um, when you talk about gimbal lock, it's only two out of three axes, but mm -hmm. basically a gyroscope inside of a gyroscope. You have the flight computer down here with all the logic modules and memory modules. This is something that's currently on auction um, for the first time ever from another person. And so I've never seen one of these available before, but that's just this section of the entire flight yeah. computer. This is the, the whole setup. So we, we looked at this before. Yeah. So down here, uh, there are basically two layers, uh, the flight computer and then on top uh, seems to be the memory. Exactly. And uh, here okay. on this that the catalog. The current auction catalog. Yeah. Um, or our auction and they're saying that they've never to their knowledge it's the very first uh apollo guidance computer ever to appear at public auction and, and it's just a prototype unit so we'll see and uh this is also some of the memory modules in the back and the part numbers for, yep. that, for that one but but you have the real deal here huh? yeah i get the whole thing yeah and this one was then also used uh, after the apollo program shut down at Edwards Air Force Base for some additional navigation tests and, and uh, development. Mm -hmm. So this computer, amazing, it's huge, it's heavy, it's bulky. That was for the lunar module. In contrast, this is for space shuttle. Oh, uh, wow. And, uh, <laughs> this is a serial number one, uh -huh. and it's a much more compact design. You can see, the, again, they had the sort of idea of the circuit cards, yep. but a much uh, more compact version of the yep. circuit cards. Yep. And, uh, and then one other, two other really cool artifacts. This is an entire, um, sort of sextant and navigation uh, star tracking system mm -hmm. that actually flew on AS-202. It's one of the early Apollo missions. This was the first flight specifically to test this equipment mm -hmm. and whether, and, and basically this was the design that uh, was used on all the subsequent Apollo missions to do um, navigation and star sighting. This is like a baffles, that, sort of like a shock absorber. And this is the sextant um, inside. Ah, so these, wow. yes, I understand now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually you come around here, you can see the, uh, the labeling of it. Apollo Guidance and Navigation System Optical Unit oh. and Flight 202, uh -huh. oh. AS-202. Uh -huh. This uh, was my first attempt to get to space. This is uh, the sort of ribbed tin can of uh, the early capsules. The S was from the words United States. It's the S ah, from the yeah, United yeah, States. Yeah. And this uh -huh. thing only went up about a foot or two and then exploded. <laughs> so it's a, oh, yeah. a piece of wreckage from that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, and that is, those are pretty much the interesting things here. Oh, here's something you can show on this app and navigate. Um, Small model here. Oh yeah, I'm a model of it. But you can see some of the controls here that are kind of interesting. You've got, you've got your uh, suit pressurization and depressurization, because you would hook, not only would this you know, purify the air inside of your, you know, uh, let's say your lunar module, I believe it was actually in this case, um, 
you could actually hook your suit up to it as well. Mm -hmm. And you have all kinds of coolant controls and you can basically see all the different elements here that make this as complicated as you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. Yeah. And then this I haven't seen oh, before. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, Fin can from, I believe it's from a bullpup, but I have to check because I got a bunch of the same shipment. Uh -huh. um, really lightweight, nice structural material. This whole thing, oh, uh, this piece of paper lifts pretty easily. Uh -huh. I'm not using it. You know, I'm making a table table top. Ah, uh -huh. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Absolutely. That's very cool. Oh, and there's Apollo catch on uh, so uh, What is that? Right, the full deck in the Apollo command module. These are the three seats that. Uh, you know, the astronauts would be sitting in. Yep. And I actually have the joysticks, you know, the translation control assemblies <laughs> as they're yep. called, that I'm going to attach each of these. So I have the full, right. the full control set up here yep. for that. Uh -huh. Which uh, should be pretty fun. Very cool. And that six point seat belt. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think that connects. See into the top here? Yeah, yeah. Fact, yes, could, yeah. Uh, That's like uh, on aerobatic planes. Uh -huh. You need to be strapped up nicely. Same, yeah. same concept. Let's see if I can get that in there. Something's locked up in there. Uh -huh. Well, I haven't played with this yet enough to mm -hmm. figure out how to make the uh, to make those work. But yep. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, right? It's so cool. <laughs> you got it in a set of three, huh? Yeah, because it comes in threes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that one's hooked up properly. Mm -hmm. Cool. And the that one I've seen before. Which one? The mm -hmm. that one. Yeah. The RL10. Can you explain a little bit? Sixty-nine versus two hundred sixty-three. It's uh, still to this day until the wrapper engine starts flying. From SpaceX, this is, uh, but I guess you could say it is flying. This is the highest, highest speed um, in that piece of engine, mm -hmm. I believe, um, to, this, to this day. Yeah. And, it's, uh, and they actually uh, push fluid mm -hmm. uh, exactly. for cooling, huh? Exactly. It comes down and then back up again, and that keeps this bell from um, melting. Overheating, yeah. yeah. So yeah. instead of an uh -huh. insulated layer, you use the cryogenically cooled fuel, and you get two benefits. One is it keeps this cool and from melting. The second right. is the phase change from liquid to gas mm -hmm. of the fuel. Uh, drives the turbo pumps. That, mm -hmm. That's a very powerful expansion from liquid gas. Ah, yes, yes. And it drives uh -huh. the turbo pumps to force the fuel into the combustion chamber. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But when this is at full thrust, it's hotter than the sun internally, uh -huh. but icicles can simultaneously form on the lip. Really? Yeah. So you can have icicles forming that's on the lip. Crazy. It's hotter than the sun right there. That's you know, crazy. This is brazed together with silver. Uh -huh. And each of these tubes actually has to pinch down. There, there are cylinders down here, but then they pinch down to an oval. That's how you get the yeah, shape. Yeah, yeah. And then so they, they see how they smaller, cross, yeah. cross weave out back yes. to uh, back to um, so was, um, circular again, and then pinch down the oval again. Yeah, so it's yeah. very complicated, actually, uh, wow. technique to yeah. turn tubes into a bell. Yeah, that's very Because imagine if you just put the tubes, you get a cylinder. Yeah, exactly, right? yeah. Uh, so that, a, that, that's very expensive tubes. manufacturing. It is, very much so, yeah. In fact, the process engineering, how they did that, they manufactured many, then they did this analytical, I think, X-ray analysis of mm -hmm. each one, and then they used computer models to match pairs of tubes together so that their internal flux and flow would be about matched, yeah, and yeah. you wouldn't have like some flowing better than others, and you wouldn't get hot spots. Ah, okay, okay. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But compare the complexity of this, everything, the valves, mm -hmm. the turbo pumps, to this, which is the lunar module descent engine, much simpler design because it has an ablative or insulative later on the inside. So it uh -huh. doesn't run through, it, through here, it just relies on an insulator. Yep. And it just has two fluids that when they combine, there's a single, single butterfly and they valve. Come this side when here. they open, these two fluids go in. Uh -huh. And when they contact, they uh, ignite. They don't need an electric igniter, they don't need anything else. So you just basically open a valve, pressurized fluids go in. Uh -huh. oh, yeah, and what's the fluid? Uh, there's hypergolics. There's, uh, NMH, I believe, and uh, I can get you the exact names. I've forgotten now mm -hmm. off the top of my head what they mm -hmm. are, but they're uh, toxic. So mm -hmm. you don't typically use them uh, unless you're Russia or China doing <laughs> ground vehicles. So, uh, they're usually used in, in space for various thrusters, yeah. attitude adjustment thrusters and such, mm -hmm. where you want a simple, small engine, mm -hmm. but uh, rarely for thrust. This, yeah. though, when you're landing on the moon or taking off from the moon, you can do it quite easily. Yeah. Um, and so in this case, it was a descent 
engine. This is a TR201 variant of that that was used after Apollo for some additional uh, additional uses. Yeah. This engine is an X15 engine. You can see the tubes again. X15. Uh, mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, X15. Uh -huh. you know, test fired on the ground quite a bit. Uh, uh -huh. In the combustion chamber, you know, obviously it's upside. It's down. kind of small for for X15. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah. But that's that's just, that's the boy. And the same concept here for cooling. Same, same yeah. Concept. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, by the way, is a windshield from the X-15, mm -hmm. specifically from the one that holds the record still for the Mach 6.7 flight. Uh -huh. So they switched from a trapezoidal to an oval frame, and the reason this is not with the airplane that's in the museum is because they also re replaced them after each flight. So they had ah, one of uh -huh. the earlier flights of the X-15 after landing because of thermal expansion coefficient mm -hmm. difference between the glass plate and the inconel X-frame. Yeah, uh -huh. It shattered the glass. Now, yeah. Oh my god, that was terrible. Luckily, post flight, they're like, we need to be careful. Mm -hmm. These things are getting super hot and it's creating a lot of stress on the, the window. So right. we'll switch to a smaller oval window mm -hmm. and we'll replace them after each flight. So that's yeah. why mm -hmm. yeah. I see. a specific yeah. one from that flight. The, and, and nothing's flown faster. No airplane, no fixed wing airplane has flown or any kind of wing. No, no piloted, no human piloted uh, airplane has gone faster. Faster than that one. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. Still the record. And yeah. this pump here? Oh, that's a turbo pump from an Atlas. Um, it's so heavy. So this is the thing, kind of like what I was talking about there, where you have something that needs to spin and jam the, oh, actually in this case, I can show you, like this rotating yeah. more easily because yeah. of the axis on the ground. Yeah. But basically this would be the pipe. This thing right. would be spinning inside there and jamming fuel in. Mm -hmm. the, the general engineering challenge is you have a lot of pressure inside a combustion chamber because it's, you know, a rocket engine yeah, you, have to thrust. Over overcome you need to be pressure, stronger yes. pressure yeah, exactly. to get the fuel yeah, in the yeah. first place. Uh -huh. yeah. This is a Russian scramjet engine, the thing that gets the scramjet going. Called wow. Called K-H-O-L-O-D. Uh -huh. um, again, very complicated, similar similar function. You can see the bell is sort of down there. You can see like how much stuff hangs over and around some of these engines. That yeah. are, like in this case, a lot smaller than the X-15 engine. Yep. Yeah. Wow. This is a kind of a really fun solar panel. Uh, a spare from the lunar orbiter that they flew in the 60s to map the, the moon in uh -huh. detail and take photos and send them back to Earth. The way they sent them back to Earth, because they didn't have digital photography, uh -huh. is they literally um, developed film uh -huh. on the satellite in orbit around the moon. That's then incredible. Then had a separate raster scan uh -huh. beam, 5 micron beam, to then beam the data back, kind of like a television signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of uh -huh. the photo. But yeah. That's crazy. And this is a solar panel from that. Uh, wow. From that lunar orbiter. A spare that didn't fly. Yeah. They always built spares because, like, if something blew up on the launch, mm -hmm. yeah, you, so they needed another one to spare part. Yes, yep. uh -huh. very uh, cool. Marcus, sound new. Marcus, the uh -huh. space suit you've seen before. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's let's look at the space suit again. Sure, yeah. So, um, there's like, someone found me online that, that has quite a bit of research on these suits and what they were used for, um, and I want to. I'm gonna see if I can learn some more about this. We're, we're pretty sure it wasn't flown, it was used on ground testing. You can see how you know, the really shiny silver actually starts to degrade over time. They're not, yeah, yeah, the space they're not built, unfortunately, they're not built yeah. for um, ultraviolet or exposure to the elements. And a lot of the ones at the Smithsonian and elsewhere uh -huh. are showing a lot of signs of uh, wear and tear. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the iconic silver suit yeah. of the Mercury era. Yeah, I see quite a lot of degradation here. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. If there's anything else, I think that's it. Very cool. Ah, yeah. well, the, 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 a lot of things that have flown to the moon, you know, armrest from the Apollo 17 capsules that temporarily used when landing, like literally removed from the lunar module of Apollo 17. Uh -huh. Under glove worn by Buzz Aldrin on the surface of the moon. Uh -huh. Um, slice of lunar rock. Yep, that, uh, that yep. almost mm -hmm. got auctioned off at uh, uh, at Tripoli. Remember? Oh, really? <laughs> oh, oh, by accident. <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Just as a joke, she she Sorry. was holding it up and saying, uh, oh, no, 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 "Can't do that. Can't do that." <laughs> this is new. These are um, helmet. The Snoopy cap, as it's called, and the CCDM or the headset, the blue thing that's underneath the brown. That that blue one actually was used on Apollo 15. It's Jim Irwin's personal flown headset, which means it was used on all the first rover drives of the electric car on the moon. Uh -huh. So that uh -huh. blue thing that's on both sides, that that literally was on the rovers uh -huh. of Apollo 15. Uh -huh. Those were literally used on Apollo 16, mm -hmm. as well as some other stuff I've got from that mission. Mm -hmm. Those were where I started my collection. Uh -huh. uh, this is stuff from Goddard. Um, uh, wreckage from some of the earliest, all three of those objects, the thing in the background, ceramic part of a nozzle and others were used uh, 
basically in the earliest research of uh, liquid fuel rockets back in, back in the 30s. Do you know so what, what the, happened? Why I'm not sure how it's corroded over time. Like I have to look, but it's these literally date back to the 30s. Uh -huh. yeah. Especially that stuff in the yeah, background. Yeah. Maybe perhaps it. used in some of the very first I attempts to launch rockets uh -huh. in the U.S. Um, wow, that's cool here. Space suit, oxygen. Yeah, planets. that's in the backpack. Yeah, and, yeah the, the big backpack up, up yeah. near the top, uh -huh. and uh, it's usually covered with white. But here you can see what it looks like. Yeah. Uh -huh. This is relatively new. That little plate was, you know, part of the lunar Apollo 12 lunar module um, sort of ID plate. Uh -huh. um, and that scoop was used by Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin in training, not on the moon, but used uh -huh. on the ground for all their training. It is identical to the, you know, yeah, basically the one that was scoop used yeah. on the moon. Uh -huh. Yeah. So cool. And then let's we'll see the last batch of cool stuff is over here. Other stuff that's flown. The first Hasselblad camera used in space. Uh, personal collection of Wally Shira. This was my very first space artifact I collected, this vertical thing. Uh -huh. The crew and optical alignment site, it came from the window of the Apollo 16 lunar module. Uh -huh. And that little slanted glass that's purplish at the top yep. is like a heads-up display. Basically, oh, okay. there's a yeah. flashlight that projects a reticle or crosshairs, and that's essential <laughs> for docking and, um, um, but basically for docking yep. uh, of the uh -huh. spacecraft. Cool. Uh, radio that flew in the... With Gus Grissom to wow. space in 1961, but then sank to the bottom of the ocean. Uh -huh. That shows you how crude the actual radios were back then. Uh -huh. and, uh, and one of my favorite things, that, that cuff checklist was on the wrist of John Young when he was doing that jump salute on Apollo 16. It literally has the instructions of everything that he's supposed to be doing. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. It's like how to take rock samples uh -huh. and each thing. So they literally had this like spiral bound set of instructions on the wrist. Uh -huh. Can I zoom? Yeah, here. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. My grandma will be so happy. <laughs> Very cool. And then ground control equipment from Russia, and controlling mirror um, from the ground, and uh, U.S., you know, sort of the iconic, you know, place, uh, as you would see. And uh, That was for yeah. Apollo? This uh, yeah, one? Apollo. Yeah. And also, uh, later on, uh, they added these and put some new television on top for the space shuttle, but it started in Apollo. Oh, and in fact, yeah. this exact unit was used in filming on Apollo 13, the movie. Oh, yeah? Actually had it as part oh, cool. Of, you know, uh -huh. part of the scenes in the movie. Oh. And I have a countdown clock from the Gemini era that I want to put above on the wall oh. uh -huh. um, and mount that there. Yeah. The mission time and the lapse time. Yeah. And that's Soyuz back the Soyuz there? Deck. Yeah, that's a flown, flown deck of a Soyuz spacecraft um, where, yeah. And uh, you know, all these, you know, literally mechanical systems that show you where you are and interesting ways that they change the axes. You know, instead of having two scales, they literally just change the numbers. <laughs> the numbers, yeah. Uh, uh, and you uh, have, this is actually kind of clever too. They, you can change the, uh, the what's on your, um, I how it looks, let me find an easy way to show this, like what's on, on display. Uh -huh. And then, and then, and then, it's very, I'm still trying to figure out how that works, but it's very yeah. mechanical control mm -hmm. that I'm used to. And they have real, uh, sort of cross points of lighting up functions. So they have, you know, instead of rows and rows of buttons, they have like a combination of this and this, you know, obviously lights, lights up, up there. there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And even when they've upgraded this over time, they replicated that functionality on a touchscreen. Mm -hmm. um, it sort of dates back to the earliest designs. This is one of the earlier models. Do you know the reason why they chose that kind of interface? Uh, just so that you would have less buttons. So mm -hmm. imagine you, instead of 100 buttons, you have a 10 mm -hmm. by 10 row. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So in this case, uh, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So 18 by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Strangely, that is 9 mm -hmm. instead of 10. Yeah. But, but like 9 times 18, so like tongue, tongue, tongue. Yeah, yeah, like, got it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Basically, mm -hmm. things. Yeah. And it's just simply um, uh, simply the wire interface to have, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, combinations. Yep. Like that. Very cool. Yeah. Oh, the Gina engine. That's actually, I don't think I've seen that yet. I haven't written about that. But that's like the docking target in Gemini when they were uh, practicing docking and, and undocking. Mm -hmm. This is the engine that was on the unmanned cylinder that, that uh, was the target of docking. Ah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Ah, and Window here. from the lunar module, sort of like, you know, the iconic eye, the triangular yes. windows yes. that you uh -huh. go as you're landing with, you know. At angle of uh, angle of attack indications mm -hmm. in a in a planet labs dub satellite that yep. survived this massive explosion. Uh, of an I think it's one of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's uh -huh. got tossed and landed on, yeah, the yeah, on the beach. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen photos of that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Wow. And then when sunlight hit the solar panels, uh -huh. it it uh, tweeted out "Yo," 
to uh -huh. Twitter. And uh, people were like, what? How could the satellite have survived this massive explosion? <laughs> it was uh -huh. basically unarmed. Uh -huh. It's pretty amazing. There's a nice pattern Sounding, here. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what caused this, uh, this effect. Like, uh, like an artwork. Like an Aerobee 150. Uh -huh. yeah. Here, yep. Aerobee 150. Yeah. Well, very cool. Well, thank you. Thank you, so Steve. Little, huh? little tour for today. Yeah, that was <laughs> very cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. Now we are back with yes. one more thing. One more thing. The Skylab bike. There's one of these in the Smithsonian. One flew on the Skylab mission, which was one of the early uh, you know, space stations. And you need to get exercise. And you're going to study astronauts in the long-term exposure to space. And this is one of the first attempts to do that. They created everything from scratch, everything from seat post adjustment knobs, not your usual Shimano kind of equipment. Um, all of the controls are very reminiscent of the kinds of gauges you'd have in the lunar module and the exact same kind of switches and dials and every one of these, except of course, the things like heart rate, work rate, speed. It's basically like a Peloton bike, but using lunar module components. Now here's my favorite feature of the whole thing. Um, actually, I haven't even looked at these. You have a uh, sequence timing, look at this, minutes, I should look at what these are. I don't know why there's so many knobs for setting up what probably could have been a digital on entry. Uh, maybe a one per astronaut? Oh, I don't know. We'll have to look. But here's the coolest feature. The clip-on shoes. I happen to have Rusty Schweikart's shoes. He was a backup uh, for one of the Skylab missions, so these weren't flown. But they show you how you clip ah. in, right? <laughs> now, yeah. at first I thought, my first thought is, what a ridiculously big, heavy, clunky clip, and why did they reinvent or maybe, actually I should go back and look, this was maybe before Shimano. I mean, this, maybe this was the first clipless, uh, you know, uh, uh, pedal, but there's a much better story. Notice it's an equilateral triangle. Yes. And it goes in there. So I thought at first this is just for this, but mm -hmm. I then saw a photo of Skylab. The entire floor at every level is a grid of things you can clip into. Ah. And it three angles. Yeah, 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 that so makes sense. So you can clip your yeah. feet in, right, work. in zero gravity yeah. and, and be locked in. So yeah. basically these shoes were not just for the exercise bike, uh -huh. they were for clipping in wherever you needed to clip in. To the work, uh, yeah. To do work. Yeah. 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 yeah, and they were in these, this grid. <laughs> and, oh, and it makes a perfect grid because a serious equilateral triangle, mm -hmm. of course, doesn't mm -hmm. have any space wasted. Yeah. So it's all triangles everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And I thought that was brilliant. Wow. And they just, uh, they just clip in. The same way, ah, okay. as you'd expect. Just sideways, you go in and rotate. Yep. Yeah. Oh. Uh -huh. Isn't that fun? Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and there's literally one of these in the Smithsonian, and this is the only other one I know of. Oh. Uh -huh. the, uh, you know, they always had spares in case mm -hmm. something blew up on launch. Oh. They, they uh -huh. have extras of everything. Very cool. Thanks, Steve. Thank you. Peace.